Big thanks to Gloves in the Bottle for sponsoring this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this shelf. It might look simple, but it was actually full of little tricky things to figure out, but it was worth it as I had this very generic store-bought shelf in my home before, and it feels so good to finally be able to replace it with something I've made instead. I already had some walnut and maple in my shop, so I made mine from that, and I started by cutting to length all the parts to make the center hexagon. I cut all of these boards just slightly longer than really needed, so that in the next step, when I cut all of the angles, I could have some wiggle room to get them all perfect. I first cut in the miter cut on one end of each board needed. Then when cutting the second side, I set up a stop block so that I could make sure they were all the same. You could test the accuracy by placing them back to back to each other. Next, I did a test fit just to make sure things were looking correct. They were, so next I prepared to start applying glue. When doing miters, it is a good trick to lay down a piece of tape on the inside face first because there will be glue squeeze out and the inside base is always a little bit time consuming to clean up, but a piece of tape lining the miter solves that. Then another tape trick to help with gluing up miters is to lay out a length of tape long enough for all of the pieces. In this case, my arms are just barely long enough and I actually lay down two because of the depth of my pieces. This is so I can lay all my parts perfectly placed end to end on top of the tape. Then I apply the glue. When applying the glue, I'm not going overboard. I'm just making sure the entire face of each miter is covered. Now I can start on one end and roll things together. Using that tape to help hold each miter in its place as I make the roll. The tape is also acting as a clamp at the very end, giving me a way to hold the hexagon together as that glue has time to set up. However, since I have a 23 gauge nailer, I went ahead and shot in a few pin nails into each joint so I wouldn't have to wait for the glue to dry. However, if you don't have a pin nailer, then just give it an hour in that tape before removing. There's actually two more walnut pieces to this unit, but they're just straight shelves with no explanations needed. So let's move on to the maple triangles that accompany the walnut hex. These can absolutely be cut the same way as the walnut mitered pieces at the miter saw. However, I wanted to show you a different method that is typically more accurate and that is with a sled at the table saw. If you have a table saw, then I do recommend doing all of the pieces this way. What I did was tilt the blade of my saw, then use a sled to move my piece through the blade to cut one end on all of the pieces. Then I set up a stop block to cut all of the boards second cut, also cutting the boards to length with this cut. Anytime you're making a geometric shape like these, the final product will look best if all of the pieces are as identical as possible, which is where using a more accurate tool will pay off. But know that it can still be made regardless of which tool you have. Since my design has two triangles, I repeated the process to make a second. In the end product, these triangles will slip right over the horizontal portion of the hexagon shelf. That didn't work. Good practice, tape. I would actually prefer to make these cuts at the table saw, but the blade on it will only go to three inches and I needed four. So instead I used the miter saw. After making all of my marks indicating where the cuts needed to be, I set the depth on my miter saw so that it could only go to four inches. I first cut the outline lines of my marks. Actually going slightly inside them because you can always take away more, but it is hard to put back. My intention was to take away the remaining inside one cut at a time but the first cut was actually enough to break it out of there. So with that done, I just had to get the bottom flat, which I did by lowering the saw to its full depth of four inches, then slowly moving my board left and right until the blade hit the side walls of my cut. I kept my shelf piece handy so that I could test fit things and make adjustments. It was a too small to start, so I took a little bit more away until the shelf could easily slip into place. And let's try it out. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, now. Ta -da! Neat. The thing I like about the miter saw for the triangles is I was able to cut both slots at the same time, but on the shelf, I use the bandsaw. The thing with the bandsaw is the deck will tilt, but only one way. And I'm gonna show you that cut first, even though I made it second in real life. You tilt the deck, line up the blade, make both outside cuts first. Then chop away the innards until you have a nice rectangular slot. To get a flat bottom, I like to get close to the line with my straight cuts. But then, just like what I did at the miter saw, I move the piece slowly left and right, going across the blade to level things out. For the second cut, which is opposite of the first, you can't move the table down. So instead, I move the part up by way of a jig. This jig is a scrap piece of wood that is cut to the proper angle. And then it is secured to the miter gauge of the bandsaw. Yet another scrap is attached at the top to give me a fence to hold my part flush up against. And this is gonna allow me to hold my part in place and move it into the blade at a 90, but it will actually be cutting in at the angle needed to slip right on the other parts. Let's see if it worked. On this part, I was being very careful because those two outside pieces will be fragile and break off if I have to force it down too much. So I took my time to wiggle it on nice and square. And that was the last complicated bit. Now it was just down to finishing. For a hanging method, I attached some simple store-bought brackets to the top walnut horizontal shelf. Since everything is attached, it's the only thing that's needed. Then I put on a coat of finish. And something I've taken to doing is applying some shielding lotion to my hands prior to any finishing. This lotion is called gloves in a bottle and bonds with the top layer of skin to prevent things like stains, paint, or other finishes from penetrating past the first layer. It is such a simple protection if you keep a pump bottle in your shop like I do. Oh, and don't worry, it doesn't leave your hands greasy. For people who wanna work without gloves, it's a number one protection. After letting the coat of finish dry, the only thing left to do was remove the old boring shelf and install my new custom one. I just slipped right on. Cool. I know it's a little unconventional, but there are enough flat surfaces to hold the items I personally like to store over here, which includes a speaker, my glasses, clutches, and keys. You'll see that I only place key hooks on one side in order to keep the light switch in this area clear. If you're looking for an interesting shelf design, then I hope you found this one inspiring. I have a set of plans, not only for this project, but for many others, available on my website if you wanna check it out. And that's it for this one. I will see you on my next project, guys. Okay. Ow! Oh, that hurt. <laughs> What'd you do? I punched it. What? <laughs> you know how sometimes I go, <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually I was recording on both. <laughs>